try. Hey now. If anybody wishes to speak tonight, uh, there is a place to sign in over there, and we'll get you on the agenda. I'd like to call this me meeting to order. Will Hyman? Here. Gary Key? Here. Jim Alpajo? Here. Jerry Riffle? Here. Wayne Ward? Here. Vice Mayor Junkins? Here. Mayor Marina? Here. This evening we have our prayer and our pledge by our vice mayor. Everyone please stand. Father God, we gather here today under your care and protection. Thank you for your loving kindness that never fails us. We thank you for those with us that you would guide our thoughts and actions to bring you glory. Strengthen us and fill us with your peace. May we love and serve each other as Jesus has shown us. Fill us with his Holy Spirit to do your good work on earth. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of the minutes of the conference work session on October 13, 2021. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Approval of the minutes of the regular session of October 21. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Petitions, communications, and public hearings. Brad Riffey, Executive Director of United Way, wishes to address council. Yes, if you could come up. And, and we, we give five minutes to uh, each speaker, so and would respect, uh, uh, allow them to speak, and then uh, we'll, we'll give, go to the next uh, speaker. Thank yes, you. sir. Uh, thank you all very much for having me this evening. Uh, I represent United Way of Harrison and Doddridge Counties. My name is Brad Riffey. I'm the executive director. And uh, I look at this room tonight, and I see a lot of wonderful community leaders here. And I'm here really to thank you. Uh, for that leadership. Uh, even here in the audience, we have some wonderful folks who have always supported United Way, even led United Way at one point in time. And our community should be very proud and honored to have the United Way that it has. Since 1957, we've been fighting for our friends and our family members here. And we're going to continue to do that. But in order to do that, we need the community's support. And I'm, and I'm here to highlight a few reasons why it's, a, it's, it's an incredible opportunity to support United Way. You know, we support 18, come 2022, we'll support 18 nonprofits in Harrison County who also serve some Dobridge County residents as well. Health Access, for example. Last year, they saw nearly 4,000 Harrison County residents. That's an incredible. And residents who had limited or no health care. Uh, you know, the Child Advocacy Center right across the street was able to provide for over 500 children who were sexually assaulted or abused, right? And now we fund the Healthy Grand Families program in partnership with the schools and family services. And our grandparents who are raising their grandkids, over 30 families have access to their 
own social worker who helps them navigate through all kinds of different things so they can raise healthier families. All of this work is supported through United Way, through the community. And every penny, every dime of your donation goes back to the community. And I don't know a lot of nonprofits who can say that. And I know that this council and I know that this community has supported United Way for years and we're blessed and we're, and we're so thankful. Uh, so we just ask for your continue, continued support and ask for the community's continued support. As you all know, COVID-19 negatively affected everyone. And uh, it, it, in many ways, negatively affected our organization. Uh, we're losing donors, right? We're losing support slowly over the years. Uh, unfortunately, those folks um, fall off. Uh, so we're, what we're trying to do is, is breathe some life back into the organization to attract people to United Way, to get involved. You can donate. You can donate your time. You can volunteer. All these things you can, you can do through this amazing organization. I want to thank the mayor for wearing his, his Live United mask this evening. Because that's what we do, right? In order to accomplish things here in our community, we have to band together. Uh, the council's proven that. A lot of our local folk leaders here in the community have proven that. And that's what we want to carry forward with our organization. So I just ask that everybody please join us. And if you have any questions at all about anything we do or who we serve, call me. 304-624-6337. I have an open door policy. I'd love to have a conversation with you because we are accomplishing some amazing things here in Harrison and Doddridge counties. And uh, without United Way's help, I'd hate to see what this community would look like. Our children, our seniors, our veterans, our low income families all depend on these United Way programs, not to enable them, but to get them to a point where they might be able to do better for themselves on their own. And I think that's very important to note too. So thank you all very much for having me this evening and uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you, Brett. Tina Yoke wishes to address the council concerning activities of the Park Court Visitors Bureau in the winter months. <laughs> Good evening. Oh, I guess I'll hold this. Thank you for the opportunity. I did just want to reach out, first of all, to thank you all for everything. I've had the privilege not only to work with the council members, but you know, public works, law enforcement, finance department, the grand uh, city parks, every person that I've reached out to in every one of those departments have been cooperative and helpful and excited about the things that we are doing. Five minutes isn't enough time to tell you, you know, to update you on the activities, but I'll just highlight a couple recent ones. I've had the opportunity to work with Clarksburg Community Action with the spectacular event recently, and then also a local business owner with the lighting of Court Street. What, ha what we're finding and what we're feeling is a crazy energy that's happening throughout our community. People are just pining for opportunities to come together. The most recent activity that we're working on, and I hope everyone has heard about, is Clarksburg Winterfest. I've become friends with that committee that have come together to work with that. People, and I thought I knew a lot of people, and actually I've worked with a lot of people that I've never met before. We have a mighty group of volunteers that are coming together. Now we're meeting weekly. We've been meeting for eight months to work on this Winterfest activity. We are working hard to bring in family-friendly activity to downtown Clarksburg for the community, not just Harrison County, but other states and neighboring counties to come to. Friday is a parade and an artisan market and food vendors, and then we're going to have a beautiful tree lighting on the lawn of the Watermore. Saturday is going to be the artisan market, food vendors, and activities all throughout downtown Clarksburg. We have something just about every hour of that day. So I just am asking you to share, you know, everybody that you know, we want people to come home to Clarksburg for Christmas and Winterfest, and I promise you it's going to be a magical event. Thank you. Thank you. Clint Ardona wishes to address council concerning the Tolly Drive Clinic. Hello, can you hear me all right? Yes. Um, you know, so my name is Clint Argona. I own WB Fitness on Tolly Drive. I've uh, 
had this fitness business for about 20 years in the county, 14 years in Bridgeport, and then six years in my current location. So today I'm, I just found out about there being a clinic that is going to be put on Tolly Drive. And um, so again, since I learned about this today, I'm no expert on the codes, but I did look into it a little bit and to my understanding, you know, there's different codes that suggest not around schools, not around daycares, these type of things. And I thought maybe there was an oversight or, or perhaps, I don't know, I just thought I would share this. So I brought this paper, and again, I'm not really, I'm not that excited to come to like meetings and talk in public or whatever, but I kind of felt compelled to do it because each paper here represents a family that uses our child care. So we do have child care. And this is a lot of people, um, you know, this could represent anywhere between one and three kids in the family. So that doesn't include the situation where we do our workouts outside, the moms, and then the kids with the sports stuff that we do on the side and the outside stuff. And there's a call to sac that promotes loitering, this type of thing. So I thought to myself it was important that I came up here in case it was an oversight that I shared that this is something that, that I read. I do read, uh, at least like I said, it was just today. So I've only read a little bit. Uh, I've read a little bit and it says things like the kids, the teenagers, these type of things. So it did, my concern was that it's only 250 feet from where I'm talking about. And this is uh, the reason why I came. So I just wanted to make sure I, I shared that that it's a concern, I, I pose it. I think that there would be a better location, a, prop, a better proper fit. Two minutes, that's all I needed. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you, sir, appreciate yep. it. Sierra Davis wishes to address council concerning the same issue. Hello, my name is Sierra Davis. I am the daughter of Robbie Davis, the owner of Brookside Bar and Grill, and also an employee of the restaurant that is going on nearly 12 years of business now. My dad is right there back with me. Um, I would like to thank the city of Clarksburg for allowing myself as well as other business owners within the community to have this opportunity to speak today. I am here on behalf of the new Subuxing Clinic potentially opening in the area that would neighbor my family's restaurant. While I believe a facility like this is beneficial to our community, I am highly against it being near commercial and residential locations. I am aware that the opioid addiction is a major issue affecting Clarksburg and our entire nation, and I would like to try to tackle this problem together. But while Subuxin is the medication, it may also play as a drug. It has successes and it has failures. With that being said, I would not feel comfortable with myself or my other employees opening up or closing late at night after a shift. Within a 2,500 foot radius on and around Lodgeville Road is home to many restaurants, fitness gyms, hotels, banks, shopping centers, office buildings, and even a church. Places where people within our area and surrounding community comes to relax, hang out, run errands, etc an area where it is extremely accessible to gamble or grab a drink, an area that could potentially harm an addict rather than actually help them. While my biggest concern is protecting our community, this clinic would also be harming our booming tourism industry. Our restaurant is in between three hotels, so it is no surprise that most of my father's and his employees' business comes from guests visiting the area, passing through West Virginia or staying there. The businesses at the top of the hill rely on tourists to succeed. We are constantly trying to keep it family friendly. These businesses house and feed many sports and college teams all year round. I have a four year old niece. She's in the restaurant almost every single day. And I would just hate if families, my niece, my sister would all feel uncomfortable coming around. And we worry that with a facility like this so close, visitors and families will choose to stay nearby and dine elsewhere. I would also like to address what a high traffic area Emily Drive and Lodgeville, area, Lodgeville Road are. There are already several motorcycle and vehicle accidents a year due to the high volume of travelers in the design of the road. Not to mention this area is an adequate location to easily access the highway. What a tragedy it would be if one of these patients leaving a facility were to get injured or killed or cause some other type of accident. 
a better option for a clinic is closer to a health facility rather than around local businesses. Somewhere these patients are able to seek the proper treatment they deserve and in their health or in an area that is detrimental to their health or to the businesses and customers within Clarksburg. I thank you for your time and hope you consider, consider our community's request. Thank you, Sierra. Okay, and this last one, I can't make it out. Nadia? I'm sorry about my handwriting. I am a computer engineer, so, uh, so I'm bad. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak about this. I come to know about, I'm also, I came here regarding the same issue with my friends and my neighbor from WV Fitness and Brickside Bar. And I think they have already covered uh, and better because I come to know about this an hour or two before. So that's why, that's why I'm here to support them. I think I won't take much of your time. I think they have already covered all the points and I, I would, I would request you if you can help us in this matter, that would be really appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. City Manager's report and update. From the manager's office, interviews were conducted for the position of multimedia specialist. Uh, Mr. Whitmore and the mayor attended the North Central West Virginia Business Summit held in Fairmont last week. And there will be a road naming ceremony for John Raymond, Sheriff Tiano, this, uh, this Friday at 1 o'clock p.m. on North 20th Street between Gold Avenue and Pride Avenue. <clears throat> the police department, the department responded to 2,262 calls for service for the month of October, leading to 20 felony and 110 misdemeanor arrests. 38 motor vehicle accidents were investigated. Six new police officers will be sworn in on Tuesday, November 9th at 10 o'clock here in council chambers. The department received a $2,500 grant, community grant from the Clarksburg Walmart to update computers in the patrol room. And the department is participating in the No Shave November to raise money for Children's Hospital in Morgantown. <clears throat> from the fire department, the department responded to 298 calls for service for the month of October. The fire marshal performed 19 inspections and provided fire safety lessons for fire prevention month to over 250 children in our local schools. The truck committee performed their final inspection of the ladder truck and it will be delivered the week of December 13th. From city parks, the department has received over 100 signatures endorsing the pickleball renovation project as we seek grant funding for the project. The trunk retreat had over 2,000 children attend and 31 local businesses and organizations participated. Uh, the local monument company has been contracted to repair the, the city monument at Monticello Park. And the local Rotary Clubs held a mini golf fundraiser at the River Bend Mini Golf and raised over $3,000 for polio vaccines. From the Robinson Grant Performing Arts Center, Beatlemania Magic will be performing this Saturday, November 6th at 8 o'clock p.m. And Stomp will perform on November 13th and 14th. The Cultural Foundation of Harrison County and the Barbara V. Highland Fund for the Arts has sponsored these events. Tickets are now available for the screening of the film White Christmas and the Holiday Dreams, a spectacular holiday circus. Uh, please see our, visit our website for additional details. From code enforcement, the department issued 39 building permits for a total project cost of $146,286. 24 notice of violations were issued. Six structures were condemned and 23 were moved to demolition. 26 residential and seven commercial inspections were performed. 17 vehicles were tagged for towing and eight vehicles were, correction, 17 vehicles were tagged for towing, eight vehicles were removed. Uh, animal control responded to 42 calls for service with 11 animals taken to HCAC. For public works, fall cleanup is now completed with 104 loads or 180.72 tons of garbage was collected. The annual fall leaf cleanup has begun and preparations are beginning for winter operations and the sewer department replaced 315 feet of sanitary and stormwater lines. From the wastewater treatment plant, the plant treated 199 million gallons of wastewater for the month of October with no violations to report and the plant received 182,955 gallons of septage for revenue of 
And that is the end of my report. Unfinished business. Consideration of second reading of an ordinance authorizing the acquisition and construction of certain extensions, additions, betterments, and improvements to the existing public sewage system of the City of Clarksburg and the financing of the cost thereof, not otherwise provided through the issuance by the City of Clarksburg of not more than $900,000 in original aggregate principal amount of sewer revenue bond, Series 2021A, West Virginia SRF program, providing for the rights and remedies of and security for the registered owners of such bonds, authorizing execution and delivery of all bonds relating to the issuance of such bonds, approving a loan agreement relating to such bonds, authorizing the sale and providing for the terms and provisions of such bonds, and adopting other provisions relating thereto. Anyone wanting to speak for or against this uh, ordinance can do so now. I will close the, the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. New business, consideration of a $50,000 contribution to the Clarksburg Visitors Bureau. I will now uh, entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that $50,000 be paid to CBB out of ARPA fund pending authorization from the State Department. Second. Discussion. Second. All in favor? Discussion. Discussion. Yeah, um, it's unfortunate that um, Ryan Kennedy felt compelled to start another CB, CVB rather than attempt to work on, with the previous CVB. The previous CV, CVB dissolved and distributed over $40,000, which could have been transferred to our new CVB had he been more transparent with his actions. And now we are being asked to consider funding in the amount of $50,000 of taxpayer dollars when in hindsight, we could have had the $40,000. I'm all in with the CVB and the wonderful job that Tina Yoke does, but I have to vote no on this. Okay, we have a, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? No. Ayes have it. Oh, roll call. Will Hyman? Sorry. Yes. Gary Keith? Yes. Jim Malpajo? No. Jerry Ripple? Yes. Wayne Worth? Yes. Vice Mayor Jenkins? Yes. And Mayor Marino? Yes. The ayes have it. It passes. Council comments? Uh, Jimmy? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank everybody that showed up this evening. Um, don't forget we have the Winter Fest coming. Also, I want to say that, uh, you know, if you see something, say something. Pick up the phone, dial 911, get the police involved. You know, if you don't make the telephone call, there's nothing we can do. And uh, Chief Kitty's office, I mean, you know, it's, it's as easy as picking it up and, and uh, making the call. And everybody have a nice weekend. Uh, Terry? Uh, let's see. Um, i got several things I want to talk about. Uh, I agree with Ms. Davis about the impact that could have positively to our community if it's in a right location. We have a medical campus up by the United Hospital Center that to me would seem an ideal spot for a clinic. Um, I, I don't know why that's, you know, there's office space up there. Um, I, I don't know why that hasn't been attempted. Um, but anywhere around areas that could harm residential or business is, I mean, it's not good. Um, and it's why everybody's speaking out against it. And a lot of people are speaking out against it aren't saying that they don't believe it can help. They're just saying it can also harm businesses and things like that. And if there's a place where, you know, it can work, like a medical campus, then that's where it needs to be. Um, and uh, you know, another thing, we, Tommy Thomas, I don't even know what to say. I mean, just... Uh, I remember him from the DARE program. I remember coming into school. I remember the, how much I respected him. Um, he is an example of community policing that we need, that, you know, he's the, he's the type of officer that kids would not be scared of. They would not be worried. Uh, they would run up and talk to him. They were excited to talk to him. Um, and I think we need that now more than ever with the police. Um, and, you know, I hope his legacy, I, I know, I hope we as a city, <coughs> 
keeps his legacy alive and hope, hopefully the kid or the younger officers that don't know him or never work with him or don't know anything about him know everything about him. I hope this, you know, they can learn, you know, after he has passed that all the things that he did and how much he did meant to our city. Um, so I hope his, we can keep his legacy alive and honor him in that way. Um, you know, with CBB, I, uh, I talk to Tina all the time um, in the mornings, and I, I feel like I should tell her good morning and good night, but I don't, you know, I don't want to cause any issues. <laughs> uh, but those type of things are, you know, our city has our problems, but the incremental advances by having things going on that are positive. Um, Winterfest, I am, I am pumped. Uh, I, you know, it's going to be getting everybody involved. Um, <coughs> there's so much going on, and, and I think the CBB is just as important as any other, we're not, it's not our department, but it's instrumental in, you know, Clarksburg getting to a place where it needs to be. Uh, things to do, positive things. And uh, like I said, I, I'm always, any, I mean, I talk to Tina all the time, like ideas, and we seem to be on the same page about ideas and things, and it's, it's exciting. Um, you know, it's, it's just important for people to be in positions in the city that care about the city, not just care about the job they have. It's, it is a job. Um, but the job is not just to get paid, it's to help move this city forward and we have people in those positions. Uh, and, you know, we have just other people in place and it's, it, you know, I'm really excited moving forward. Um, so I'm glad that we can help them out. Um, be a service. And I always tell anytime we need to shut down a street to have an event, we're going to shut it down. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's got some exciting things coming and, um, Thank you, Jerry. Uh, Wayne? Yeah, I, I appreciate the businesses coming out. Um, all of us up here, we, you know, we're on council, we ran for council because, you know, we want to see our city be a, a center of investment. And a lot of times um, when you walk around our city, you know, there, there's a lot of challenges and a lot of problems. And and those problems need to be dealt with. Um, I just don't want to see ourselves being a center of homelessness and drug activity. You know, the businesses come out here today because they have put the investment, the time, the effort, their livelihood into, you know, into investing in our city and investing in the quality of life of our citizens. And by, you know, by having something, you know, hinder that or possibly put that at risk, I think it's wrong. Now, do I believe that people with drug addiction need help? They do. I'm a licensed social worker. That's what I do for a living. But at the same time, you know, there are places that you could put clinics like this. And I have my questions about buprenorphine because it's a, it's a highly... Uh, it's, it's a drug that has a lot of diversion. That means, you know, yes, it could be used as a medication, but also it could be used, you know, to get high and to sell and that sort of thing. Um, you know, when it comes to homelessness and addiction, we have resources. You know, the United Way, Brad Riffey, you know, their homeless rehousing program has rehoused over 70 people with a 90% retention rate. That's 70 less people on the street. And they're in homes now, and they're not out here, you know, creating chaos or anything like that. I support things like that because those things are tangible. You know, the one thing I don't support, though, is, you know, is, is clinics going into residential areas or business areas that are going to put those businesses at risk, okay, from not getting customers or put residents at risk of their quality of life. We all invest way too much in this city. You know, all we expect in return is some sort of quality of life. You know, if I have a $100,000 home, you know, I expect that that neighborhood's going to be going to be nice. And I expect that, you know, um, you know, our city leaders or our state leaders in this in this situation, because this is going to have to be reviewed by the state because it's so far from a, you know, um, I guess a child care, you know, um, place. I expect them, you know, to you know, to look at our quality of life in, in, in our businesses, you know, in our investment first. 
Um, that's pretty much all I've got to say about that. You know, we have to be a center, of, we have to focus on being a center of investment and investing in the people that invest in our city and not be that center and focus on that center of homelessness and addiction. Um, other than that, on a more positive note, um, uh, Clarksburg Community Action uh, down in the West End, I don't know if you guys have seen, seen it yet, but when you drive down in the West End, the, the big building down there, the, the old Fox 46 building, um, uh, is pretty much, I'd say, halfway painted. Um, Saturday, we're going to get out with a group of volunteers, and we're going to paint that building. And talking about the CVB, we're going to use their logo, and myself and hopefully a few other volunteers are going to spend until 2 o'clock in the morning Saturday, you know, um, cutting out the stencils that says, come home to Clarksburg. That's a CVB logo. We're going to have it right on that building with a nice navy blue new painted building. That building's what, about two and a half stories high. It's going to look really nice when you come down there. Um, we really want to, you know, invest. There's a lot of good volunteerism out there, a lot of great, great volunteers that want to see our city grow. And it's little things like that um, that make a difference. When you drive down West Pike Street and you see that come Monday morning, you're like, wow, that's really nice. They did that and they did that in a day. You know, um, that's something to be proud of. So instead of focusing on the problems that are walking around that street, they look at that and say, man, that's an improvement. And it's very exciting, too, to, to hear that we are really looking, actively looking to, to market the old Kroger building into, into a retail. And that's good, you know. And hopefully it could be something that both people at Koopal Towers and our seniors at the Clarksburg Towers could really benefit from. So um, I appreciate you guys listening to me and um, appreciate you all coming out here. And, um, and I really appreciate you the investment you have made in our city and our city's quality of life. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, Gary? Everybody's talking a lot tonight, so I'm not out of place like usual. I always talk a lot. Uh, thank you to everybody that came out tonight. Um, it's a complicated issue, and I hope it's not too late for us to do anything. Uh, the child care thing, I love that. I hope that works. Uh, we'll be all over that. I can definitely assure you this council is with you. Um, this clinic has kind of been like whack-a-mole. Uh, we pretty much stopped it from going to Nutter Ford. Uh, several of us went to that meeting and we came up with a way to stop it there. And you know, lots of people complained where it was going to Bridgeport and now here we are again. Uh, and you know, like these guys said, I, I don't want to be completely negative towards what they're trying to do. Um, just not sure I agree with their methods. And I don't think that's a place for it. I mean, you put a Suboxone clinic beside a bar, what could go wrong? I mean, it seems like a terrific idea, doesn't it? I, it seems like we're up here talking common sense. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, you know, that's, that's our negative thing right now. But I just assure you this council's working on it. We're going to do anything we can. Uh, and, you know, we'll maybe even try to be creative. Maybe we'll come up with some new taxes or something. They won't want to be here. Uh, I don't know. That's maybe up to say manager. He's probably sweating from me talking like that. But, you know, I'm not shy. It is what it is. They're not welcome, so we're going to make it as unwelcome as we can. Uh, you know, talking about some good things, uh, I actually had a great day today hearing about new developments, things I'm probably not supposed to talk about yet, but uh, one thing I do want to bring up, uh, because it's a huge deal and everybody's talking about it, it's just not true. There's not a homeless shelter going into the Kroger's. Not happening. So kill that rumor. Anybody who thinks that's happening, it's not happening. Uh, we're hearing there's a national retailer going in there. We don't know who yet, but it's not going to be a homeless shelter. It's not happening. Please, everyone, stop spreading that rumor. False. Um, I'm excited about Mr. Taco getting a permanent location over in Glen Elk. This is a great restaurant. I don't know if any of you have had the opportunity to try the food from the truck, but their food is spectacular. And I'm telling you folks, Glen Elk is an up and coming area. Uh, I have an, a lot of investment over there myself, so I want to see it succeed. And you know, Glen Elk is like the untapped resource of Clarksburg right now. We have a huge commercial industrial area, uh, easy for traffic in and out of, all these big buildings that are empty. And you know, they're starting to slowly fill in. I hope people are paying attention and see what's happening over there. And God thank Gene Papa. Uh, he 
he's got a little bit of stuff he needs to clean up over there, but overall he is the he is the savior of Glen Elk right now. So if you see him, thank him. I'm really excited about six new police officers being sworn in. Uh, we've done a lot, a lot of work to get that to happen. Chief Kitty, you're the man. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep on rocking. Uh, terrific. We're hiring a multimedia specialist. That's something we need to keep on talking about. Uh, good job, Harry, getting that, getting that happening. And Winterfest. Tina, thank you for coming. Um, I do want to take a little, Mr. Malfoy, I want to take a little bit of heat off of Ryan Kennedy. I was 100% in favor of creating the CVB, and I thank Ryan for taking the leadership on that. Uh, the only useful resource they had was Tina, and we got her. Um, they could take their $40,000. It just went in the toilet with the other hundreds of thousands of dollars that they got over the years they did nothing with. So thank you, Tina, for running our new CVB. And with a shoestring budget, not even close to what the old CVB had, you have done amazing things in the short term. I mean, from the Landau Eugene Murphy thing to the other big events you've had, uh, Winterfest, I think, is going to be your crown jewel. I look forward to seeing what you do with it. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Thank you, Gary. Vice Mayor? Will? Oh, Will, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm wanted to pass you up. It's okay. It's I'm all right. Sorry. Well, I, I did have some, some, some uh, stuff to mention. I want to thank you guys for coming out. I think there's, there's nobody on council that thinks that the clinic has a place here in Clarksburg. I mean, ultimately, it will go somewhere. Uh, you know, I think it has to. Uh, but up near Brookside and up near those restaurants and the fitness place is just not a good place. I know that the mayor of Nutter Ford reached out to his, uh, the, our, our state reps, and uh, they found the uh, proximity to the daycare, Nutter Ford Elementary School, and that immediately got next. The state stepped in and they, and they handled it. If we can somehow get that information to the state about the child care facility up there, uh, I believe that will happen. It will go the same route. So uh, I think we need to take care of that. If the city manager can maybe expedite that somehow. Um, again, it's, it'll probably end up somewhere. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it, it's one of those not in my backyard things. And uh, unfortunately, you know, the business of uh, rehabilitation is booming in our state and uh, but ultimately it has to go in the right spot and I think we can make the right decision on where it can go uh, somewhere uh, hopefully not in the city limits of Clarksburg uh, that being said uh, I want to extend my condolences to Susan Thomas and her family on the passing of her husband Tommy uh, I didn't grow up in this area but uh, you know I heard a lot of, a lot about him and all the outpouring of memories and reflection on Tommy tells me that he was a, a certainly a special person um, I'd like to talk about some emails I got from some constituents uh, in the last couple weeks since the last time we met. And the first one was regarding the disposal of uh, how, uh, hazardous materials that uh, are as simple as household cleaners, paint, other things that waste management defines as hazardous. Uh, you guys may have gotten that email as well. I don't know if you did or not. But, uh, you know, I contacted waste management for this man, and waste management said they don't, they don't take it, which, you know, I, it is what it is, but I would like uh, Harry and, and council to, to come up with possibly a one-day disposal event that involves waste management, whether it's countywide or citywide. Uh, you know, I don't know, but somewhere where people can bring their hazardous waste. <coughs> I know it sounds silly, hazardous waste. I mean, th this guy literally had, you know, uh, cleaners and solvents and stuff like that, which, you know, you think you could just throw that in the trash, but apparently you can't. Uh, so I'd like for us to look into something like that. So one, one day disposal event where people can bring that stuff in and, and it can be disposed of properly. Uh, another one, uh, another email I got was uh, regarding the parking meters. I know we, we traded several emails between each other regarding the removal of the uh, parking meters here in town. And, uh, you know, I think everybody is, for the most part, in agreement. Uh, we just, we need to come up with a solution on how we can, how, how we can do it. So, you know, I'd like for that to become a plan, something that we can come up with a study of some sort where we can hash that out before the end of the year. Uh, you know, I think it's, it seems pretty basic to me. You know, uh, we just got to come up with a solution to make sure people aren't parking, you know, eight, ten hours a day on Main Street, uh, you know, which I think we can. Uh, I think we're, we're pretty smart people. I think we can figure that out. So other than that, uh, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Will. Yep. Uh, Vice Mayor. Um, yes. Uh, what I would like to talk about is the Suboxone Clinic. Um, first, and 
don't misquote me on this, but believe it or not, it, it gives me hope because this is the first time in years that I don't feel like the only person that's up in arms over something that is not right in this city. And that people are actually listening. It's not falling on deaf ears. Um, and people are coming to talk about this. They're, they're, they're awakening, awakening. They're alive. <laughs> they're not happy with things that are occurring in our city that are wrong. Um, I felt like the only person that was you know, screaming, shouting, kicking, this isn't right. Why, why are these things happening within our, within our little town? And so um, I didn't even have to attend the meetings. I mean, there was, we had several people that went. And so it feels really good to know that, you know, people are starting to wake up and say, not here. It's not going to happen here. We're going to figure something out. Do I think that we need to treat addicts absolutely and offer that but I agree wholeheartedly with you Wayne that um, that's about money and profit and it's not about making people better so um, it gives me hope to see that, that people are caring and talking about this so to me it, it was kind of a, a good thing um, CCA will be taking on this in, big endeavor in downtown I think it's going to make a, a huge difference in sparked a lot of interest with a lot of the kids at school. Their parents have been asking about coming down and volunteering to paint. Um, I hope to be there and hopefully we can get a lot accomplished using the new uh, CVB logo. Uh, Gary, you hit the nail directly on the head with Ryan Kennedy. Um, I give you major props in having uh, the guts to do what you did with reforming this CVB and, and what's happening with it. The $40,000 should have still been given. Why it wasn't is beyond me, but that's okay because we're moving forward anyway. Um, Tommy Thomas, may you rest in peace. He was a family friend, um, a good man. Friends, my parents were very close with Tommy and my condolences to his family. Um, Tina, thank you for all your doing. Well, I'm last, and it's it's tough to go last. I'll sound like I'm a repeater of what everybody said because everybody made some great comments, but I still want to go and echo that. Uh, to the folks that came out today, uh, that's what your government's for is to listen to what you have to say, and that's what we're here for. Definitely open government and, and listening to your your request and we will definitely uh do that uh it was brought to light this evening that there's a daycare uh close and and i'm very familiar with the uh state law because when that happened in nutter fort uh, uh a lady that i went to school with actually uh contacted me and and i got the ball rolling about that state law and it was quickly shut down so i'm going to direct harry to look at that and have uh, uh whoever he chooses to to look up uh, that law and pass that on to the proper authorities to look and see uh if this daycare is as in uh, the proper distance from uh the clinic and i'm sure it's not so if, if that's the case uh, i think uh, we'll act quickly on it to uh to dissolve that issue and problem so thank you so much for coming out and and uh and that's that's what we're supposed to do is, is to listen to what the people say and i agree with each and every one's statement about it uh we you've got our full support and we'll do uh whatever we need to do legally and the right way to go about uh doing the proper thing for you guys uh second uh again i have to make a comment to Jimmy, he's saying the the mayor, and that's he he wasn't the only one. I fully fully supported the CVB, um, you know. And as I told Jimmy, you know, when I got sick and I came back, and I apologized for my approach when I handle things and how I talked to him, but I did say, you know, politics is funny, and I will not 
probably vote everything the same way, but I want to be respectful to him when I say that the CVB is is a much better in a much better place than it was uh, a year ago. Uh, we got a wonderful director. The the Winterfest, the Eugene Landau Murphy. Uh, we did that for to be positive and it's turning out to, to very well show that it is positive and I'm so happy to give that money because the the CVB has suffered during the pandemic and it would only be right to uh, get them on their feet for as well as they're representing the city out there uh, with the CVB so I commend uh, Tina's efforts and everything she's done and that board uh, they're doing a great job and uh, it'll be evident when this Winterfest comes that there was no question why we made a change and that it's going to be positive. So I think everybody will, will uh, be on board for the, the new new CVB. And they did. We had requested that $40,000, but they wanted to take their marbles and go home, and that's basically what they did. They could have given that to the CVB, and we probably wouldn't have had to ask for this money, but they took it to disperse uh, whatever way they wanted to. So they that we did ask for that, and the new CVB should have gotten that. But again, we're going to make it, and, and that we're going to move on in a positive way. Um, Mr. Taco, uh, great business opened up. They got wonderful food. Everybody hopefully will come out and, and visit Mr. Taco. They're in a beautiful building in Glen Elk. Uh, I don't want to plug that building, but it is a pretty building over there. So I wish, wish them much success uh, at their new location, and I'm sure they'll do fine. Did they get free rent? <laughs> No, they just give me free tacos. <laughs> but uh, Tommy Thomas, uh, great guy. Uh, I worked uh, with Tommy uh, for a number of years. Uh, Susan's the county commissioner, and our condolences go out to Susan. Uh, he will sh surely be missed uh, uh, with the kids and the D.A.R.E. program that he provided for a number of years. Uh, I want to tell everybody about Sheriff Tyana. Uh, Sheriff, great guy. We're going to have a uh, ceremony uh, naming a uh, alleyway for Sheriff tomorrow at 1 o'clock over in Northview uh, off of 20th Street. Uh, hopefully everybody come out in, in remembrance of, uh, of Sheriff because everybody, uh, if you met him, he, he sticks out in your mind. You'd remember him, there's no doubt. Um, I see the parking meter situation. And, and I've got the same email as everybody else did, and that's, that is just a, a, a difficult situation, but I agree with uh, Will. Uh, we need to probably do a work session, get all the information so we make, a, you know, it's not as easy as just taking out the meters because that definitely will not solve the problem. You take out the meters, the workers at the courthouse and city hall and all the businesses will take, park at those spaces all day and to have it open for customers coming into the city it, it won't happen we'll have to do a lot of research uh get financial and I, I know it's not about the financial situation but i think you'll still have to have a uh, meter attendant to go if you chalk the wheels for two hours or however you will have to do that so it's it's just not open and cut uh case but that's what harry's here for and he'll provide us with all the pertinent information so we can make a wise decision on what we need to do with those meters. Uh, and I see, I think that, that about uh, sums it up. I want to tell my uh, happy birthday to my nephew Oliver. His birthday's today, and he watches us, and I'm, <laughs> hi, Oliver. But, uh, okay, uh, I talk long enough. But thank you guys. I appreciate you guys coming out. Uh, have a motion for adjournment? Adjournment. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. I got signing.